Welcome students. This session is for MA Previous English Literature, Paper 1st, that is English Language and Documentation. In this session, we'll be dealing with word stress. Let's see what word stress is. A word stress is the verbal emphasis placed on one syllable of a word. Students in my earlier sessions have already explained what a syllable is and a word might have more than one syllable and you should remember that word stress is a verbal emphasis on only one syllable of a word. This occurs in every English word that has more than one syllable. So it's not always the same syllable. So this rule keeps on changing. There is no one definite rule which syllable is going to get the accent or the stress or you can say emphasis and this rule keeps on changing. One word has only one stress. One word cannot have two stresses. So this you must always remember. If you hear two stresses, you hear two words. Two stresses cannot be one word. This is true that there can be secondary stress in some words. So in some words, you may feel that there are two stresses coming, but the secondary stress is very small and uh, in comparison to primary stress and it is only used in long words. So secondary stress you're going to find only in long words and it is very small in comparison to the main stress. So basically you all must remember that in words there is only one stress. To communicate clearly when you're speaking in English, it's important to stress the correct syllable in each word. So a word which is made up of multi-syllables you must remember as a speaker of this English language that only one syllable in a multisyllable word gets stress or you can say it's important. This is called word stress which means pronouncing one syllable of a multisyllabic word with greater emphasis than the other syllables in the word. Here are four general rules to keep in mind about word stress as you practice pronunciation. Now just see these rules. Stress the first syllable of, so if you are using most two syllabical nouns, then the stress is always on the first syllable. For example, climate. You don't pronounce it as climate. You pronounce it as climate. The stress is on cli. Knowledge. Most two syllabical adjectives, so even the adjectives which are made up of two syllables, the stress is on first syllable like flippant, spacious. Stress the last syllable of most two syllabical word, verbs. So if the word ha is a verb uh, and it has two syllables, the stress is on the last syllable. For example, require, decide. Stress the second to the last syllable of. So you see that the second last syllable is stressed in the words that end in IC, that is ik. For examples like ecstatic, geographic, words ending in S-I-O-N and T-I-O-N, you have the stress on the second last syllables. Examine, sorry, examples, extension, retribution. So here I have put uh, the stress syllable in, in a capital so that you know where the stress is coming. Stress the third form of last syllable of words that end in cy, ty, phy and gy. So the words which have their spellings ending in these, for examples, you have the words like democracy, uncertainty, geography, radiology. So here you have the stress third from the last syllable. Words that end in al, example, exceptional, critical. So you have to count the syllables from the last and the third syllable from the last gets the stress in the words that end in the spellings with cy, ty, phy and gy. A stress syllable combines five features. So how to know that which syllable is, going, is uh, pronounced in a stressed way? You can see these five features in a stress syllable. It is longer. So when you are pronouncing a stress syllable, you pronounce it 
more long. For example, computer. So pew is pronounced longer in comparison to t or com. It's louder. Computer. Pew is louder than any other syllable. It has a change of in pitch from the syllables coming before and afterwards. The pitch of a stressed syllable is usually higher. So you see, when I'm, pro when I'm pronouncing this uh, word, computer, so here, pew is of higher pitch in comparison to t. I'm not pronouncing it as computer. I'm pronouncing it as computer. So here we see that this, the syllable pew has a change in pitch. It's said more clearly. The vowel sound is purer. Compare the first and last vowel sounds with the stress sound. Now see, uh, here in com, you have the vowel uh, o, and uh, in ter, you have the vowel sound a, uh, and in pew, you have the vowel sound u. But you see that this u sound is said more clearly in comparison to the other vowel sounds which are there in the word. So you say it as computer, and your pew, that is u, is far more said clearly than or, or a sound. It uses larger facial movements. So when you, when you practice this word and you look at yourself in the mirror, you see that when you say the word, look at your jaw and lips in particular. So when you are speaking, or you can say that when you're pronouncing the stress syllable, your jaw and your lips, they are larger in facial movements in comparison to the unstressed syllables. Now here are the six essential rules of word stress in English. So these are rules which you should keep in mind when you are applying a stress uh, to any word, any uh, syllable in the word. Uh, but remember uh, students that these are the rules which have a lot of exceptions involved. So these rules are just going to provide a little bit of a guidance or a guideline to you, but uh, you cannot say that these rules are absolutely fixed rules. Let's have a look at them. A word is normally stressed on the first syllable unless there's a reason to put the stress somewhere else. Basically, there's always a stress on the first syllable and there are reasons why you are shifting stress in, on any other syllable in a word. And the reasons are either suffixes like iti or ion or prefixes like con, dis, x or n. So suffixes and prefixes, they play a major role in uh, shifting the stress in any of the a syllable in a word. Now see this rule three. Students, this rule three is very important and we are going to carry this rule later also in this session. Just have a closer look at this rule. The EN rule, I-O-N. This rule takes priority over all other rules. Well, it's not quite an iron rule. It's not a fixed rule, students, but it is the most important rule of word stress in English. So if the suffix that is ending starts with the letters I or U, as with the common ending I-O-N, this will affect the position of stress in a word. So you have a lot of uh, uh, suffixes that start with letters I or U, and this does affect the position of stress in a word. Exceptions are, as, as, as I said, are always there. Exceptions, the ending I-S-T, ISM, IZE, and ING. So uh, this, the, these, if these are the suffixes, then there will be exceptions. Example suffixes, I-O-N, U-A-L, U-O-U-S, I-A-L, I-E-N-T, I-O-U-S, I-O-R, I-C, I-T-Y. So we uh, normally see the words that end in these suffixes. The stress comes on the syllable before the suffix. And here are the examples, Atlantic, comic, sufficient, relation, explanation, residual. These are only very few exceptions to this rule. So uh, usually uh, the stress comes just one syllable before the suffix, and there are very few exceptions to this rule. Other suffixes do not affect the stress of a word. Sample suffixes, AL, OUS, L Y E R E D I S T I N G I S M. So uh, students have a look that if any word is ending with these suffixes, the place of stress does not change. 
you see the word permanent the stress is on per and when you derive another word from it uh, for example permanently the the place of uh, that stress does not change it remains on that first syllable that is per so it's permanent permanently develop development so you see that with these suffixes as a l o u s l y e r e d i s t i n g i s m we see that uh, these uh, suffixes don't change uh, the place of stress now let's have a look at the prefixes in a two syllable words and see the difference if the word is a verb noun or adjective if you see a verb that has a prefix they are almost all stressed on the second syllable so you look at this uh, word almost not all so these are the examples to address to become to complete to contrast to discuss to export to improve to present these are the verbs with the prefix and the stress is on the second syllable now have a look at two syllable nouns and adjectives starting with the prefix and this need to be learned individually so there is no one rule that applies all rather if a noun and an adjective is of two syllable words you need to learn where the stress is going to come individually now see the examples of adjectives and noun where stress is on the prefix example is absent complex distant and expert a contract a permit a record adjectives and nouns not stressed on the prefix so here again there are two syllable words but the stress is not on the prefix examples are extreme concise a report in many cases such as to export and export or to conflict or a conflict verb and noun are distinguished by being stressed differently so if a word is a verb then you see that the word like conflict the stress is on flict and the same word when it's a noun you stress on the first syllable like a conflict but unfortunately this is not always the case uh, but again this rule does not apply to all here the words like report and design whether they are used as verbs or they are used as noun the stress is on the second syllable this is why all such words need to be learned individually so as i said earlier that the rule of stress does not apply to all the words rather it's an experience and you need to learn words individually to see where the stress lies and also why even native english speakers sometimes make mistakes so this word stress is a very uh, complicated thing and it's something which comes through experience and you cannot apply a rule of a grammar or a rule of a phonetic or any fixed rule of phonetics on the word stress so it all the words need to be dealt individually now i have a look at prefixes in three syllable words prefixes are usually stressed in three syllable nouns and adjectives so when if a word is a three syllable and it has a prefix so usually they are prefixes are, are stressed when there are three syllables noun or adjective they are not always stressed in verbs which need to be learned individually but the same stress does not come on a prefix when the word is verb and this again you need to learn it individually here the examples are of noun and adjectives look have a look at it accident confident decadent exercise in things incident permanent and look at the examples in verbs and you see that the stress is not coming on the first syllable to consider to envisage but to complicate to indicate so these are the verbs in which uh, this stress rule is differing and the first two words in consider and envisage the stress is coming on the second syllable whereas in the verbs like complicate and indicate the stress is coming on the uh, prefix now useful note all three syllables verb ending in eight are stressed on the first syllable so here you see these verbs which are ending in eight 
as in complicate and indicate the stress is always on the first syllable. Now have a look at this rule three, which uh, we did talk about uh, a very important rule of uh, stress. Uh, this takes priority over all others, notably when a rule three ending is followed by rule four ending. So the words with the suffix uh, with I or U, and when they are mixed up with the rule four ending, for example, perpetually, deliciously, conditional, conditional, illusionist, or when the rule three ending is added to a two syllable word, stress on the first syllable. So if the same rule, uh, three, it is added uh, and the two syllable word is used, the stress is always on the first syllable. For example, complex, complexity, contract, contractual. So how, you know, does the stress shifts when you have a word which has a different uh, suffix. Uh, in complex, the stress is on com and when a word complexity is derived from it, you have the stress on plex. In the same way, contract and contractual. So these are the rules and I would suggest to you students that uh, these are very minor guidelines for a stress rule in phonetics. Uh, the basic thing is that you need to look at every word individually for applying stress on any word. So this list of rules is not complete, but does explain where to place the main accent in majority of words in English. So as I said, that this may help you out with majority of words, but they are not the fixed rules for the stress marker. And you need to look very closely into all the words in order to place the stress on the uh, right uh, syllable in the right place. Thank you so much. I think that this rule of stress is uh, clear to all of you.